Welcome to Electron Online. Here we're starting up a new series, particularly because of some requests of some of the viewers. They asked me, can I do some videos on Lagrangian mechanics? What is Lagrangian mechanics? And how do we pronounce that name in the first place? It's a French name. I think in French we pronounce it Lagrange. But how do we pronounce it in English? Well, Lagrange is the way I call it. And what is the concept here? Well, Lagrange came up with a concept that he called Lagrangian, he used the letter L for that, or at least we did, I don't know if he started with the letter L, but he said that L was equal to the difference between the kinetic energy and the potential energy of an object. Now many textbooks will use T for the kinetic energy and V for the potential energy. I prefer KE and PE because it makes it easier to say, hey, that's kinetic energy and potential energy. Let's take an object, such as a, an object in free fall, it has mass m and it's falling towards the ground with the velocity v. The acceleration is assumed to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared. The kinetic energy of that object at any moment in time will simply be equal to 1 half mv squared, depending upon what the velocity is, and the potential energy will always be equal to mgy, and again it will depend upon the height above the ground, if the ground is the reference position. So how do we then find the equations of motion? Well, the equations of motion can be determined using the Lagrangian by using this equation right here. If we take the partial derivative of L, which again is the difference between the kinetic energy and the potential energy of a particular situation, we take the partial derivative of that with respect to the velocity. X dot, of course, is the first derivative with respect to time of position. And then we take the time derivative of that, and then we subtract from that the partial derivative of the Lagrangian, again, the difference between the kinetic energy and the potential energy, with respect to position, and we set it equal to zero. From this, we can determine the equations of motion. Now, you may wonder, how can that possibly be? Well, in the next video, in the next couple of videos, I'll show you why that actually works. Right now, we just want to go through the motion of actually calculating a simple example to see that it does indeed work. Another advantage of the Lagrangian is that we can use what we call generalized coordinates. Even though this is in the y direction, the motion is in the y direction, both velocity and position, we simply can call it x, some general variable x, where x dot is the velocity and x represents position. And so we can say that the velocity of the falling object is x dot and the height of the object is equal to x or the position of the object is equal to x. Let's now find the Lagrangian of that particular situation. The kinetic energy then becomes the following. The kinetic energy is equal to one half the mass of the object times the velocity, which is x dot squared. And the potential energy is equal to mgy, but instead of y, we'll use a generalized coordinate x, mg times x. We can now take the partial derivative of L. Oh, no, first we need to formulate L. So L which is equal to the kinetic energy minus the potential energy can now be written as one half the mass times x dot squared minus the potential energy of mgx. So this here is what we call the Lagrangian. We're now going to take the partial derivative of that with respect to x and the partial derivative of that with respect to x dot. So first, the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x. Well, since there's no x in, in this term, that simply goes to 0, minus, and we take the derivative of this with respect to x, x is the variable, these are the constants, I would get minus a, whoop, I don't need that, it would simply be m times g. So the partial of l with respect to x is simply minus mg. We now take the partial derivative of l with respect to x dot, which is the velocity of the object. So the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x dot is equal to, now notice there's no x dot in this term, this term goes to zero, and here we bring the exponent down, we get 1 times m times x dot to the first power minus zero. I simply put the zeros there to, to show you that we actually did take the partial derivative of the other term. If we now take the time derivative of the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to velocity, we get the following. So the time derivative of the partial of L with respect to x dot is equal to the derivative with respect to time of what this is equal to, which is m times x dot. 
And of course, the derivative of that would simply be x double dot. This is equal to m times x double dot. That's the second derivative of x with respect to time. And this is the first derivative of x with respect to time. Now we can go ahead and plug those two quantities. This is the parcel of L with respect to x. Let me go ahead and circle that. That would be this term right here. And this here is the first part of that equation. And Lagrange said that if you take this minus this and set it equal to zero, you can now find the equations of motion of that particular situation. So let's do that. So here we put in the first one, which is mx double dot minus and the parcel of L with respect to x is minus mg, so minus mg, that is equal to zero. Of course, the minus times the minus, that becomes a plus. So mx double dot plus mg equals zero. And you can see here that we can divide both sides of the equation by m. So we get x double dot plus g is equal to zero. And therefore, x double dot is equal to minus g. Now, what is g again? Let's go to this equation and take a look. g here is a positive 9.8 meters per second square. The potential energy is zero at height equals zero, and as you go above the zero position, then the potential energy must be positive, which means that since y is positive above zero, g must be a positive quantity too. g in this case is a positive 9.8 meters per second square. So coming back over here, we realize that this is minus a positive number, which is a minus number, and x double dot is simply the acceleration of the object. That means that this equation simply says that acceleration is equal to minus 9.8 meters per second squared, which is indeed what is happening to this object, which is in free fall. So this shows us that by using the Lagrangian, we can actually come up with the equation of motion. We can actually describe the acceleration of the object. And then if we take the derivative of the acceleration, we can find the velocity. Oh, no, I'm sorry, not the derivative. If we take the integral of the acceleration, we can find the velocity. And we take the integral again, we can find the position as a function of time. We'll show you how to do that in a later video. Here we simply want to show you the concept of the Lagrangian. Again, Lagrange said that, I can, that he can come up with a concept called L, which we now call the Lagrangian, which is simply the difference between the kinetic energy and the potential energy. Most textbooks use T and V or T and U or something like that. In a simple example, we can determine the kinetic energy and the potential energy of this particular object in free fall. We then use generalized coordinates. We let x dot be the velocity and x be the position. In this case, that's vertical position. We can then come up with the Lagrangian, which is simply the kinetic energy minus the potential energy in generalized coordinates. We then take the partial derivative of L with respect to x to find this, and the partial derivative with x dot, the velocity, to find this. Then we take the time derivative of this result to get that. Then we plug that into our equation because Lagrange said that if you use this equation, you can find all the equations of motion you need of any situation a lot easier than it is done in traditional sense. When we get like compound pendulums and things like that, and atmut machines as part of another atmut machine, a complicated problems like that, the Lagrangian is definitely the best way to solve for those. And we'll show you some examples of how to do that. But here we now have the concept of what the Lagrangian is. And in the next video, let me show you why this equation actually works. Because when you look at it, you go, how can that even be possible? I can see it gave me the right answer, but how does it work? And why does it work? Well, we'll get to that in the next video.